bit, little bit general of this. Um, so I guess that some theme of the conference is that we have a convex, convex analysis and complex analysis coming together, and that fits pretty well with some of the work we'll talk about. Um, so let me start by one situation, very classical, where this is well known. So this is about when you have a complex algebraic torus. By this, I mean like C star to the D in this case. So let me see the how uh, Is this big enough to see? Okay. Um, right? So this is a copy. And then you have a map down to um, RD. So if I have coordinates here, I just take individually, say, the log absolute value of di. So this is a let's call this map time. This is a proper map. And we have this maybe in dimension one. The three images here are just of course, circles, or more generally, they're real tori. And I can think of I have a, an action, maybe let's call this s to the power d. So where I mean by s is the unit circle. The opposite of that, that's acting on these fibers. So I have this kind of situation. And this allows me to, for me, in this situation, you have quite nice when you do in terms of complex, complex analysis to illustrate this connection. So if I take, say, U inside RD on that. Um, Right. So on the one hand, if I look at say an look all right, so let me take a value field. So the main example perhaps is if I take the complex numbers with the usual norm, the usual Archimedean norm. Um, then there's a whole of lots of examples, and the other ones I don't really care about are not intermediate examples. And I guess all the people look at like the adding numbers and things like that, but that's not with the Thank you. 
Now I can just, um, maybe I should say one thing here. So it's not equal to k. So if I always have an embedding of this place here, um, k star of the party inside tm. So how do I do that? So I just make a d-tuple of elements of k, and I can just kind of plug that into my Laurent polynomial. Mill. I get an element of k, and I just evaluate that. Right, so then this turns out to be an injection. Um, so this guy is a, this is projective in the case of one, but not in the case So in the, in the complex case, I really end up with the same object to do something. So now we kind of put this up here, so I'm just going to write it. You change this to the tiny bit, but it's essentially the same. I just put now instead of in a tuple, I just put a norm here. And I just evaluate my coordinate functions on that I still get And I still have an action where s to the d, now this is not some perfect bit, but you could maybe do that too. But what I mean here is really elements of k star to the d with more one in every instance. So I'm going to have some kind of, still it's going to be a proper map, still. RD is still the same thing. Well, these are circles, but it, it are four eye really quotes. I'm not going to look exactly like that. I want to get that. And um, otherwise, it's very much the same. So what, what does change? Certainly, I can look at complex sets. And what's something I, something I just said, and I won't write it out now either, is that you can, I said this is Topological space that you can equip it with a structure sheet to define what are analytic functions on open subsets. And if I look at an open subset of this, of the pre image of U, the complex set, that is exactly the same thing. So these are going to be a convergent or wrong series where you have to specify what convergence means, but it's really the same way. So you want a nice structure sheet. Okay, and this also is fine. Then you can define kind of a sheet of Continuous plurisomonic functions here. So here, this is good. And this is also going to be true. That you have a motion pair operator on continuous DC functions is going to satisfy this. And both of these, is, this was various iterations of this have been done, but I think it's in the setting, maybe I should general theory. such a thing you can 
associate also an analytic analytification. So in the complex case, this would just be the corresponding analytic, I mean complex module with its homomorphifying model, and the Berkowitz case you can define this as well in a similar way as um, so the study of such things, or rather the study of you talk about pluripotential theory, or maybe I'll say global or geometric pluripotential theory. So that would be basically the study of, say, continuous pluris of a monic, say, maybe pluris of a matrix more than
action here, but in analyzing partial pair like equations, the correct setting is called even young. So what's so I want to be essentially here, so I want my x and l algebraically, it should be defined by I don't want this to just be
take x to be uh, to be a subset of e d plus one, so hypersurface of degree d plus uh, two. So in this case, we have a canonical choice of new. So in the first case, um, in the first case, I, I just take new to be right. So what does it mean here? In the complex it means to have a global or morphic volume form. So I can just take that global or morphic volume form, take that and zero form, and I wedge it this conjugate uh, constant. But if I want a probability metric. So in that case, it turns out that x n, so there's an analog of this, the, this Colabiao Berkowitz space contains a canonical subset, a skeleton, so which is some kind of global version of this NR that's sitting in here, except that in this case it's a compact subset. So it's this, this is, think of this as a, a simplicial complex. Uh, this is a skeleton, and this has Thank <laughs> you. 
And then from that, 